Hello and welcome to the first episode of my Wulong Boss Guide series, where I will go through every main story boss in this game. The boss for this video is Zhang Liang, the chapter 1 tutorial boss. He is a very aggressive boss that will relentlessly attack you and punish your mistakes, but he also has several weaknesses which are easy to exploit. In this video, I will introduce his main mechanics and weaknesses to help you beat him the intended way, as well as one cheese method that allows you to skip phase 2 almost entirely. Zhang Liang is really aggressive in his first phase. He can close the distance between you two really fast as well. This means that if you need to heal, you want to pick the time carefully. However, he can be staggered by any attack and can only get out of your attacks by either jumping backwards or performing a critical blow. A good way to keep your offensive momentum is to use martial arts and spirit attacks in between regular attacks to keep your combo going. Do keep in mind that he can use a critical attack at any point, so be careful if you lock yourself into a long martial arts animation. When you lose your offensive momentum against him, the best way to break his chain of attacks is by deflecting an attack and then applying pressure again. If you have a hard time deflecting his attacks, a good trick is to hold down the block button while deflecting. If you deflect too late, you will end up blocking the attack instead of getting hit. However, blocking will not prevent you from taking damage if you deflect too early. Unfortunately, critical attacks cannot be blocked, and the only way to avoid those is by deflecting or dodging. In phase 2 he will be much lower and his attacks become more telegraphed. As a trade-off, he cannot be staggered anymore and his attacks deal more damage. As opposed to phase 1, where you wanted to stay as aggressive as possible, in this phase you want to be more patient and choose your actions wisely. Zhang Liang will always initiate the second phase by swinging his arm in a wide circle motion. You will be moved to a spot safe from his starting two swings unless you move closer to him. I recommend using this opportunity to apply buffs before you start fighting. You want to try and stay close to him in the second phase, as he likes to do his range attack if you are too far away from him, and this attack is more difficult to deal with. The range attack can't be fully blocked either, as it deals both physical and earth damage. This is because elemental damage cannot be fully blocked until later in the game with special effects. However, if you struggle with deflecting his ranged attack, Blocking is still better than getting hit point blank. He has quite a long recovery in between his combos, which opens him up for a few seconds. You want to utilize these openings to either heal yourself, reapply buffs, or attack him. When he starts a combo, you want to hold down the block button in case you deflect too late. But don't be too passive, since trying to block an entire combo will consume a lot of spirit. He might end up breaking your stance by depleting your spirit if you block constantly. He will use critical blows quite frequently. These are way more risky to deflect, but it will reward you greatly, so you really want to try and learn to deflect them. Deflecting a critical blow does a massive amount of spirit damage to the boss. This helps open him up for fatal strikes more often and end the fight sooner. You also gain a lot of spirit from deflecting critical blows, which allows you to use more spirit attacks or martial arts. However, if you get hit, you will take a lot of damage and also lose some of your morale. He has two different types of critical blows. In the first one his left arm glows red and then he lunges it at you. This attack is quite easy to reflect and a good way to deplete his spirit. For his other critical blow he will extend his right arm backwards with his hammer leaning against the ground. He will then quickly charge at you while rapidly swinging his hammer up to three times. This attack is a bit trickier to deflect since the startup is way faster than the other critical blow. One trick is to outspace the first one or two hits and deflect one of the later swings. During phase 2, your Divine Beast gauge starts to gradually fill up. Doing most types of attacks and even taking damage charges it slowly. But landing fatal strikes build it up by the most. Once the gauge is full, you will be able to summon your Divine Beast, immediately ending the battle in your victory. You might want to check which button you have to press to activate it in advance. This can be done by going into settings and finding the keybind for this particular action. In phase 1, 
Zhang Liang deals pure physical damage. Only in phase 2 does he start dealing earth damage on one attack which is the one where he shoots earth spikes at you. He is weakest against lightning, takes approximately the same damage from poison and fire and is resistant to both water and earth. This spell is key to the second phase cheese. It charges your Divine Beast gauge approximately 3 times faster than usual. In phase 1 it is completely useless, since you cannot use your Divine Beast yet, but it is in phase 2 where it will shine. By utilizing this spell in phase 2, you only need to hit the boss with a couple of normal attacks, wait for a critical blow and deflect it. This may already be enough to stance break the boss for a fatal strike. If the deflection itself was not enough to stance break him, a follow-up spirit attack should be enough to stance break him. The icon below my health bar is the timer of this spell. It only lasts around 18 seconds, so you want to keep an eye on the timer. It is really important that you have the buff active when you perform a fatal strike, as it is what gives you the most Divine Beast gauge gain. The Divine Beast gauge gain from the fatal strike alone is almost enough to fill the entire gauge when the inner breath is active. Here is a comparison of how fast you can use the Divine Beast summon with and without using inner breath. As you can see, the difference is drastic, since without it you have to get the boss's health down to around 30-40%, to 40%, which extends the fight by several minutes, and in turn increasing your risk of dying. Enhanced Defense is another spell I recommend. This spell not only gives you a boost to your defense, but it also protects you from getting staggered by most attacks. The only moves that can stagger you are critical blows. This spell is especially useful in phase 1. With this spell active, you can beat phase 1 without deflecting, blocking or even dodging anything except for his critical blows. Do keep in mind that this spell only lasts around 16 seconds. Keep an eye out on the timer and don't let the buff run out. My third recommended spell is Absorb Vitality. This spell heals approximately 13% of the damage you deal while it is active and it lasts around 16 seconds. If your main issue is running out of heals too quickly, this spell can help you quite a bit. If you do not wish to keep it active constantly, a good trick is to use this spell right before you perform a fatal strike. This is because fatal strikes deal massive amounts of damage, so you can easily heal upwards from one fourth of your full HP from one fatal strike. Calamity Bolts is the fourth and last spell I recommend for this fight. It decreases the damage an enemy deals by quite a lot, and this debuff has the longest duration out of all four mentioned spells, lasting around 20 seconds from the moment the projectile hits the enemy. If you had to choose this or the defense buff, I recommend the defense one, since it also protects you from being staggered by regular attacks. However, if you already have leveled metal on your character, you definitely want to use this spell in the fight. Now that we've gone through the basics of this boss, I hope you will beat him and get to enjoy the rest of the game. I will now end the video with a final showcase of both faces. I hope you found this video helpful, thank you for watching and bye!